Hey Ambassadors, it's Mikael Woodward, the Beer Ambassador, and I'm in Los Angeles for a special event with Brooklyn Brewery, and I happen to be able to have the luck, the fortune to be able to sit, uh, or stand here actually, drink a beer with Garrett Oliver, the head brewer for the last 30 years. So Garrett, welcome to the show. How you doing? So, um, what, what made you guys want to come to California and do an event out here? Well, first of all, right now it is six degrees in New York. <laughs> Okay. And that you know, that we're standing outside right now. You know, it's really nice. Yeah. And people have been asking for our beer to come to California for for a lot of years now. So uh, you know, we've been looking forward to doing this for a long time. Yeah. So 30 years, you guys have accomplished a lot, a lot of awards, uh, great beers, and the sour I'm drinking right now is fantastic. By the way, awesome. Um, Thank you. So can you tell us, like, were you a home brewer, which I believe you were, and then you got started into brewing? Can you give us just a, a synopsis of that? Well, let's see, I, I moved to England in 1983, nice. um, went traveling all over Europe, uh, was out there for a year, got back, they said Bud, Bud Light, Miller, Miller Light, Coors, Coors Light, Heineken, and I said no. Yeah. So I started Thank making, you, I do the same. <laughs> <laughs> started brewing beer at home, uh, you know, fell in love after making the beer just to have it, fell in love with actually making it, um, helped start a home brewing club in New York City that's still running. You know, uh, so many years later, and uh, uh, eventually went professional in 1989. Yes, I am 400 years old. That's awesome. But I'm curious. You said the, the homebrew club. What's what's the name of the homebrew club? New York City Homebrewers Guild. Okay. Yeah, the, the best. Cool. Shout I out have, to my boys. I have homebrew clubs on as well. Okay, great. Because um, I'm a homebrewer, so you got to represent, right? Uh, absolutely, so, and we do represent. Yeah, yeah. So, um, are you still in connection with those people? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. I think that's awesome that you. You know, you're not, you know, such a big fancy celebrity that you can't give time to the. No, I, 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 awesome. I, I, whenever we do like the anniversaries or the founding, or whatever else, I go like have a party with those guys, and uh, you know, it's great. I'm, I'm really proud of it. It's awesome. So, uh, it, you know, maybe just one or two words, you know, a couple of things that you want to point out. What's been your like your biggest challenge and your biggest highlight in the last 30 days, 30 years? Ago? Well, I know it's hard to say biggest challenge. I mean, the, the challenge is always innovation and quality, you know, which is what we're, you know, we're looking to do. And uh, both of those are challenging in their own way. You know, as we come out here to California, obviously you have a place where American craft beer was somewhat born. Yeah. Uh, and you could say, well, it's like taking hold of Newcastle or, you know, however you want to, uh, to put it. But the good thing is I think that we, our beers are really different than the beers that you're going to already find out here. Sure. They have their own flavor profiles and don't really taste like other things that are, that are out here in California. So hopefully, you know, we'll find a place, you know, in the great California craft beer scene. You know, it's, uh, it's going to be, I think, uh, uh, a lot of coming out here and people getting to know us personally yeah. and getting to know our beers. Awesome. Um, do you want to talk about the beers that you're starting here in California with? I mean, you can tell them the name of this one. And well, is that uh, the... uh, this is Brooklyn Lager, you know, which is uh, the, the, the sun in the middle of our you know little solar system. Sure. Uh, Bel Air, which you've got here, is like a moon. It's, uh, it is a, a sour, uh, kind of a hot side sour, dry hopped, very tropical, a lot of pineapple-like flavors. Yeah. Um, I mean, I get the, the hoppy tropical on the nose and when you taste it, and it's and still like tart. Yeah, refreshing and it's, nice. it's come out of the gate really fast here. It's sold almost as well as Brooklyn Lager, and Brooklyn Lager is like our absolutely our flagship. You know, super drinkable, but more robust than people often expect it to be when they taste it. Sure. You know, it's dry. It's got a nice sharp bitterness. It has a nice light, you know, uh, uh, dry hopping to it, and it's just like a nice drinker. You, uh, you know, it's one you stick with uh, for the whole evening. Awesome. Seasonally, we'll have Black Chocolate Stout, which is our famous Imperial Stout. You you know, one of the earliest in the United States came out first in 1994. Wait, uh, I have to stop because I love a chocolate stout. As much as I enjoy, I don't drink coffee, but I drink it uh, in my in my stouts or in my beer, I should say. With stouts usually, um, but I I, I kind of get overwhelmed that they're every stout's a coffee stout. So to hear a chocolate stout to me is like yes. Well, the funny part about it though is that black chocolate stout has never actually had any chocolate. Yes, it's chocolate. You know, it's, it's chocolate malt. Chocolate malt. I'm you know, and the chocolate flavors. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so we tried. We thought we would put chocolate in it back in '94, and we kept testing it, and we always liked it better without the actual chocolate. Sure. Now over time, it starts off kind of coffee-ish, but as it ages, yes, it starts to really tastes very much like dark chocolate so it's, uh, it's kind of fascinating. I got you. That's a big 10 percenter and then uh, you know we have Defender which is our uh, you know 
out our, our main IPA, Stonewall IPA, which is a, a 4.5% version. We've actually been brewing Session IPA since 2004, okay. I'll point out. Uh, and this is the latest Way before them. the trend, yeah. Way before the trend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So far before the, before the trend that nobody would actually drink it. Uh, <laughs> I get that, I get that. You know? I, I, I'm glad that, that most beers are accessible and people really want to try different varieties and styles. But it's taken a long time, huh? And it has taken a while. And back then, people didn't want a 4.5% IPA. They're like, I'd rather drink a 7% one. Yeah. And that same guy who was 24 then, he's now 38. He's got two kids and a real job. And a 7% IPA, with the course of an evening, not feasible anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> so nice to be able to take it, take it a little, a little bit more chill sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So what can we expect here? I mean, you guys are talking tonight. This is kind of like the launch party for hitting the, the West Coast. Uh, is there something we, you know, I can expect as being here, and that uh, people can expect to just they're going to find you everywhere? Or what? Yeah, I think that you know we have we have a way that we do things. You know, uh, you know we don't show up like arrogantly and say, oh, like everybody's going to take our beer or whatever else. No, you got to get to know people. Sure. You know, you find out where you think your beer is going to fit. People hopefully start asking for it because you get a good reputation and you build it. Um, and it does, and, and it takes time, especially in a crowded place like California where there are so many great breweries. But I think that we're gonna, if, if we want people out here to drink our beer, we're gonna have to earn our place, you know, on the shelf and on the taps. And uh, you know, we, we feel confident we can do that. Sriracha Ace is coming as well, another beer that doesn't taste anything like anybody else's beer. So I think that between these various things that are not really like what you're gonna find, uh, I, I think hopefully we're gonna find a good place. Awesome. Are you guys, are, are you, it's like California one of the last, or the West Coast is kind of one of the last vestiges for you guys, have you been, are you across the nation? We're, you know, we are not, people, people didn't think that, uh, you know, we're huge or something like that, but we, up until now, have really only been in 30 states. You know, we sell about half of our beer overseas. You know, so instead of coming in this direction for the last 15 years, we've been going the other way. Oh, you know, and so major, major places for beer for us are Paris, London, Stockholm. That's awesome. You know, uh, uh, etc. I know my but, my buddy Bert was just coming. You guys took a Sweden. Yeah, but as a result, we've neglected California. We're so sorry. But <laughs> well, you're you know, here now. We're here now. Here now. It's very cold in Sweden right now. Yes. You know, <laughs> I understand that. So you know, right now we're going to be in California. Um, so. Can I ask this? How many facilities do you have, and what's your capability for your uh, barrels-wise? Well, all together right now, we're making a bit over 300,000 barrels a year. Okay. You know, we're brewing 24 hours a day, 25 people on staff you know, in New York City, in Brooklyn. Wow. Um, and so that is a full-scale you know, facility, but that only makes a, a, a fraction of our beer, you know, 25, 30 percent. Then we have, uh, uh, you know, our our friends and partners, FX Mac, uh, uh, up in Utica, New York, who we actually started off with when we were a contract, full contract brewery, you know, I didn't going know back you to 1988. As a contract. 1988. Yeah, the brewery, oh. the brewery was actually wasn't built till '96. You know what? I think I think now that you're jogging my memory, I do, I do remember that, but. Well, that's really cool to hear. Yeah, well, we discovered the hard way. It well, wasn't that hard for us. We looked at other people and saw that uh, in 1988-89, when there wasn't anything called craft beer and there was no market and nobody knew they wanted this stuff, yeah, yeah. you had to go spend millions of dollars on, uh, on building a brewery. Uh, uh, yeah, I get and you. then, like, yeah, you can go out of business pretty fast. And we knew some people who did. And so we decided, like, let's have the beer made, build the market, get people to know us, know the beers, etc. then we can build a brewery. Turns out that worked a lot better. I'm, I'm, you know, I've been, I've helped two friends uh, do that in the last year, year and a half. I tried to open a brewery in 06, and then the housing market and a bunch of other stuff happened, so it didn't happen, and now I'm in radio. But, yeah. um, well, I, I, I studied to be a filmmaker, and now I'm in beer, so this is, <laughs> these are the things that happen. Well, then we should talk about that, because I have other ideas, but, um, um, I, I think it's still what you're saying that you went through 30 years ago is still relevant today in starting contract brewing and then getting into a brewery to, bu well, to yeah. build a brand name, right? Well, you know, it, it, it's it's completely different now. There are no similarities. Uh, uh, you know, back then you couldn't get anything. There were no suppliers. You know, there were no suppliers of hops, no suppliers of yeast, no suppliers of malt. You know, in the United States for a small brewery to use, yeah. there was no market. Wow. You know. People didn't even know when you talked to them about these types of beers, like what they were, and they yeah. weren't interested in them. So 
you have a much more accepting market yes. at the same time, true, however, true. you have 7,000 American competitors. Yes. So that's, you know, almost a thousand here in California. Yeah. So, you know, you have both sides of the coin. Things are easier and things are harder. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's a valid point. And I remember I've been drinking beer for since that time, you know, um, and I couldn't find good stuff. And I was the same as you. I didn't want to drink the Bud, the Miller, the Coors, the Heineken, whatever, Corona. Um, so it was for me, um, it was Guinness and Newcastle until I found Sierra Nevada. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Same then, here. Boom. You know, yeah, no, di- yeah, no, no different, really. Awesome. You know, and so, you know, this is the, the evolution now and the styles of beer, some of them that are brewed around the world, you know, American IPA really kind of come out of, uh, you know, come out of California, you know, et cetera. And so I think, uh, you know, California has a, a great place, you know, in the overall brewing firmament and history, et cetera. And uh, for us, it's just great to be here. Well, I want to talk to you more, but hopefully I'll have you on the show. I want to say congratulations well, for thank coming. You. Thank you for coming out. I love the beer. Uh, I love your story. I know about your book. If you guys didn't know, he wrote a book about starting a brewery. Um, <laughs> uh, no, Steve wrote that well, book. Steve, I, I, I'm sorry. I wrote two other books. What was, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah Brewmaster's Table and the Oxford Companion of the Beer are my That's books. right. I beer, do have, school, beer School is Steve's book. I, my Steve bad. Has I get book. confused. We have four books. Four books? What's the other We're one? We're really oh. smart. <laughs> I, have, I have the Oxford Companion, by the way. Yeah. Um, but yes. Okay. So, anything else you'd like to say in part? Uh, well, just uh, you know, thank you to California for for welcoming us here, and we're having a good time so far, and uh, we will definitely see you again. So, as I always say, drink good beer, eat good food, which we're not doing yet. Hang out with good people like Garrett, <laughs> and drink more good beer. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.